Good afternoon, everyone. And it's really lovely to see everyone is here in this class. And we are privileged to be here to actually present what we have done throughout the group project. So before starting our presentation, I would like to thank my team members who really done amazing job. You can say that throughout the collaborations, every time we, we did a lot of discussions, did a lot of research, late night discussions, that, that's how we actually come across in this point. So also I would like to thank to our lecturer who actually helped us throughout this course and to know a lot of things about cyber attacks, which is really important for the organizations, for us. So being a human being, we need to actually protect our data every time so that we don't actually lose anything. Oh, you accidentally show my bank account? Oh, sorry, don't show it, man. Can you get the previous slide? Okay, so it's not actually my bank balance, you can say that. So. This is what the like, it's a lot amount, like $872 million. Let me tell you a story. And it's a real life story. In 2024, in the United States, there was a healthcare company or organization which is called like Change Healthcare. So they faced the biggest cyber attack in the history and they lost this amount, $872 million. It's insane. Just think about an, a country's economic economy. They can't even actually revenue that much amount of money, but they just lost only because of some issues that they were not that much careful. So it might be happening in our company, it might be happening in your company in the futures where you are going to actually work. So yeah, that's what we're going to actually talk about, how we, do, we need to actually have a look at all the data security strategy. So in the data security strategy, we need to actually know what are the common cybersecurity attacks that we might actually face in the futures being an employee of an organization. So there might be a lot of you know, cyber attacks, uh, ways that the hackers would try to actually steal your money. And it's happening because every time we do online shopping, we are not actually going to the store anymore. Sometimes we do online shopping, so they actually put the advanced gateway systems where we are actually just um, adding our payment details. But sometimes people face the cyber attack as well. They lost a lot of money that they actually saved for their entire life, maybe for getting retired. So, and they actually become lost after losing this money. So let's have a look in the graph. In, according to this graph, we can see that from 2016 to 2020, so we can see the more we are going forward, the cybersecurity is possibilities becoming common. So we need to be careful of our data. So if we just actually move to the next slides, then we might actually get to know about what are the ways of cybersecurity attacks that the hacker would actually try to you know, steal our personal information. So let's have a look. So these are the actually attacks that we can actually be aware of. These are common attacks, you can say that, most popular one. So the malware, spam, bonnet, fraud, DOS, network instruction, DGAS, and phishing. So which are our fellow team members are going to talk about in the upcoming slides. So this is the malware attack where the ransom attack happened in that particular organization in 2024, which actually based on USA healthcare, change healthcare. So yeah, these, um, the malware attack, they actually put the virus, they send the worms. At the same time, there are a lot of things they actually do for stealing our personal information and actually not damage our company. And the phishing one, we might actually face this one every time. We might get actually different sort of messages that just claim your amount, maybe thousand dollars without doing nothing, just filling up forms, or maybe you might actually see that, okay, you have owned a thousand dollars. So this is how we actually leak our information or give the access to the hacker so that they can actually hack us. At the same time, there are some other types of hacking uh, ways like the SQL injections where the hacker would try to actually gather all the information and just try to actually get the access of your personal details. Let's have a look at some others because my fellow team members is going to actually talk about these sort of things in details. DNS spoofing cyber attack where the hacker would actually show you a real website. You might think that this is a real website, but no, this is not. So they would actually transform you to main website to another website so that they can actually get your uh, logging access, email, password, and later on your all the bank details so that they can actually steal your bank amount. And the man in the middle, sometimes it happens in the organizations. So maybe someone just sitting behind you, or maybe sitting beside you could be a man in the middle. Or maybe when we are talking throughout different sort of platforms, third party platforms, there would be a person who is actually just sitting and waiting for the proper and 
the right opportunity to actually steal your data. And yeah, how, how to actually prevent these attacks? We can do a lot of things. We can set up malware. Sorry, not the malware, actually. We can actually set up the fireworks at the same time so we can also put the endpoint security. So now I would like to actually uh, invite one of our fellow team members who is going to actually talk about uh, the, the risk assessment and evaluations. Now I would like to invite and welcome to our team member, Pravel. Please come and say your words. Uh, thank you, Imran, for the introduction of the different kinds of ERAC. So I would like to emphasize on the evaluating and prioritizing the cybersecurity ERAC. So as my team member explained that there are a lot of thousands of uh, types of ERAC that can be done by a malicious person to discuss the next part of the presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you, mate. So as my follow-up says, tell us about major attacks. And my part is to tell you the mitigation approach. Many uh, industries use the NIST uh, cybersecurity framework, which is a uh, framework, and it has program or any bot who is using that uh, software. Uh, so thank you. Next, I call my uh, friend Sajid. That's one thing. Thank you, Pratham, and good afternoon, everyone. So what I'm going to discuss is PCI DSS and cardholder data. PCI DSS means uh, payment card industry data security. So those are my recommendations, and I would like to invite Imran to wrap up. Well, this everyone, class. thank you very much, and thank you my team member who actually done have a great job, and thank you everyone for listening to us throughout our presentation. And before wrapping up our presentation, I would like to thank to our honorable lecturer who actually helped us throughout this presentation. Yeah, it's really important to actually secure our data. It's really also important to keep the company's reputation by doing the job that we are required for. So thank you very much, and thank you very much, everyone, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank so you so much. Then comes the supply chains attack, uh, which is also cited as a top risk, 60% attack uh, in, the, in the cybersecurity world. Or the NIST National Institute. <laughs> okay. You can huh? speak. Go on, go on. And for the next speech. function, where they just protect, which means they have, we have to protecting the assets. They are the whole the companies holding the whole assets. <laughs> <laughs> it's your part. It's not my part, bro. I just hiding a external commission. Uh, <laughs> 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 like, it's it's go for a one line. Donald gonna, Trump. I'm just gonna play one more line. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the software will detect automatically this is not a password, this is a SQL. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Pratham. So, I'll start with my part called PCI DSS and cardholder data. And uh, what does PCI DSS mean? Uh, PCI DSS means payment card uh, in the protect the cardholder data in e commerce and sort of pleasure that, yeah, I'm safe. Uh, then uh, I'll move to bias in biometrics, like the error rates are coming. Uh, and so I'll be in the middle, then Pavel, you will be in, the, in my side, and in the Pratham, so this is how we will actually make it happen. That is behind the scenes. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, but the recording is new. Okay, okay. 